I'm going to show you the secret definition of the second derivative. So the first derivative we all know is equal to limit h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. That is f prime of x if the limit exists, in which case f is differentiable at x. And that is the instantaneous rate of change of f at x. What about the second derivative? So of course we can do the similar process. We can just say it is the derivative of the derivative and we can write this as limit h goes to zero of f prime of x plus h minus f prime of x divided by h. But the problem here is that it's all in terms of the first derivative. So can we define the second derivative just in terms of f? And I'm gonna show you that in this video and it's so beautiful. And in fact, I will show you the formula right now. So the formula is going to be the following. It is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h plus f of x minus h minus 2 times f of x divided by h. Okay, that is going to be the value of the second derivative of f at x if f double prime of x exists. Okay, so this is a big if. If the second derivative exists, we can find it by this limiting formula. And I think that's really cool because you can directly find the derivative without finding the first derivative, you can find the second derivative. But a couple of points before we dive into the proof of this. The first point is that it is possible for this limit to exist even though f is not twice differentiable. So watch till the end because I will show you a very fun example of such a function. But now we're going to actually rigorously prove that if f double prime of x exists, so I should say if this exists, then we're going to prove that this limit is equal to f double prime of x. And I'm going to be very rigorous about this, okay? I'm going to highlight each step as a rigorous mathematics. I'm a professional mathematician. And I want to show you how to do math very rigorously. So let's dive into it right now. All right, so now we're going to prove that this is equal to the second derivative of f at x if that exists, okay? So let's dive into the proof. Now, the first observation we're going to make is we're going to use L'Hopital's rule, okay? So L'Hopital's rule basically states that if you have an indeterminate form, like here, it is zero over zero. So why is it zero over zero? Everything's going to be justified. It is zero over zero because when you take h goes to zero, because we're assuming that f double prime of x exists, f is a continuous function. f is differentiable, it's continuous at x, okay? That's all we need to know. It's continuous at x, so as h goes to zero, we get two f of x minus two f of x as h goes to zero. So we get zero on the top, and on the bottom, we get h goes to zero, we also get zero. Okay, so now that tells us, what L'Hopital's rule tells us is we can now differentiate top and bottom, and if the resulting limit exists, then the original limit exists. Okay, that's an important caveat with L'Hopital's rule. So we have to know that this next limit exists before establishing the equality, but it will exist. So we can now do this, and this is actually a very important point. We have to differentiate top and bottom with respect to h, okay, because that is the limiting variable. x is a constant here. Okay, so when you differentiate with respect to h, we get f prime of x plus h times, using the chain rule, the derivative of f of x minus h is f prime of x minus h times minus 1. Because the derivative of x minus h with respect to h is negative 1. So we get minus f prime of x minus h divided by 2h. Okay, so assuming this exists, we have to prove that we can then say that these two are equal, okay, by L'Hopital's rule. Now, an important thing here is we cannot actually do L'Hopital's rule again, okay? Why can't we do it again? Because we're being very rigorous. All we know is that f double prime of x exists, okay? So if we try to do it again, we would have to know that f double prime exists at x plus h and x minus h, which we do not know. We are not assuming it exists anywhere except only at x. That's all we need. We're proving a strong statement. So we're not allowed to use L'Hopital's rule, and in fact, it obscures what's going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a nice little trick, which I really like. And the trick is going to be the following. It's limit h goes to 0. We're going to add and subtract f of f prime of x, okay? So we're going to say this f prime of x plus h minus f prime of x. And then we're going to say plus f prime of x minus f prime of x minus h, okay? And that's going to be divided by 2h. Now, we're actually almost there, okay? Now, we have to be very careful again here. So we want to show that this limit actually is going to exist, and we want to say it's equal to f double prime of x. And then L'Hopital's rule will guarantee that the original limit is equal to f double prime of x. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to erase the top and then simplify this limit. 
All right, so let's now write the bottom limit. We'll simplify it up top. So it's going to equal to limit h goes to zero. And I'm going to split this up into two limits. Again, we're being super rigorous. We can write the limit of the sum as the sum of the limits once we know each individual component limit exists. So here we're going to say limit h goes to zero of f prime of x plus h minus f prime of x divided by 2h, okay? That's number one, and then we can add on the following. And so here we have f prime of x minus f prime of x minus h. Now already before we go on, I'll just point out that in the very beginning of the video, I explained that this is f double prime of x divided by two. Okay, we have a two on the bottom. So this is the limit definition of the second derivative at x, okay? And this is almost the same thing. We just have to reverse the order. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a whole minus sign. I'm gonna write it as follows, limit h goes to zero, of f prime of x minus h minus f prime of x. Okay, so I've just flipped over this numerator, but of course by doing that, by flipping the sign of the numerator, I have to flip the sign of the denominator as well to get the same fraction. So we're gonna say divided by negative 2h. And now that's actually again, just the limit definition of f, prime of, f double prime of x, um, as h goes to zero of f prime of x minus h minus f prime of x, divided by minus h, right? And then we have a two there, okay? So the two just make, means we multiply by half. Because each individual limit exists, we're gonna get half times f double prime of x plus half times f double prime of x, which is just going to equal to f double prime of x. And that is super cool. Now, if you're enjoying my content, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference to my channel. I love creating elite free accessible math education and helping as many people as possible. Now, I'm going to show you why this limit actually can exist even though f double prime of x does not exist. And it's a super fun and beautiful example. So I'm just gonna write it down next and you're gonna love this. And I want you to think about it, okay? Pause it for a few minutes, for a few seconds at least. Just think about whether you can come up with such an example. Let's do it. All right, so now we have this limit. We're gonna give an example of an f where this exists, but f double prime of x does not exist. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is just assume x is equal to zero, okay? So we are gonna give an example where x is zero. Keep things simple. So we're gonna get basically f of h plus f of minus h minus two times f of zero divided by h squared. We're gonna find an f where this exists. Now my first thought, and I'm showing you how to think about this, is that we're going to try to choose f to be an odd function. So recall what odd functions are. An odd function is basically going to be f of negative h is going to equal to negative f of h. Okay, so there is an odd symmetry with respect to the y-axis, and I'm gonna draw an example of such a function, but assuming we find an odd function, there are many, you know, sine is a famous example of an odd function, okay, sine of x, but we wanna find an example where the second derivative doesn't exist at zero, so we, we can't just take sine of x, but assuming you have an odd function, this limit's just going to always be zero, right, because, for an odd function, if you plug in h equals zero, you get f of zero is negative f of zero. So f of zero has to be zero for an odd function. And then this sum is also going to be zero for an odd function. So the entire thing inside the limit is going to be zero for all h, and so the limit is just going to equal to zero. So it's gonna exist no matter what, and now we just need to find an odd function where the second derivative doesn't exist. And that is, I'm gonna give you a nice example. What's an example of a function where the first derivative doesn't exist? So the famous example of such a function is the absolute value function. Absolute value of x is going to be plus x when x is going to be at least zero, and negative x when x is less than zero. Okay, that's the absolute value function. Now I'm going to give you an example of a function whose second derivative doesn't exist at zero. The first derivative of absolute value x does not exist at zero because it has a corner. If you graph absolute value of x, you basically get this graph, and you see that the right-hand limit, right-hand derivative and the left-hand derivative are plus one and minus one respectively. That's, uh, that's a calculation we see early on. But now we're going to take the antiderivative of this and that's function second derivative won't exist at zero. So that function is going to be f of h is going to equal to h squared over two for h greater than zero. And it's going to equal to negative h squared over two for h less than zero. Okay, so we're going to get, get that function here. And now you see that if you find the first derivative of f, right? So this is f of h. The first derivative is going to be the following. I'm just going to do it in one step. f prime of h, we're going to basically replace this. This is going to equal to two, this is going to equal to h. Okay, so this is going to end up being h and this is going to end up being negative h. Okay, so we're just going to get h and negative h when h is at least zero and h is less than zero. 
But then of course, and then we have to check at zero itself, right? So at zero itself, you have to do the limit definition of the derivative. That's an exercise, drop a comment down below how that would work to show that f is differentiable even at zero, but f double prime of zero does not exist because we have now the absolute value function whose first derivative doesn't exist at zero. Now I have a challenge for you. Can you find an example of an odd function whose first derivative at zero doesn't exist, okay? And can you find such an example and that would be an even stronger example where this limit exists, but the first derivative doesn't exist. Can you find one? Drop a comment down below. Thanks so much to Alex and Nathan for their ongoing support on Patreon. It makes a huge difference to my channel. And if you want to join the community, the exclusive perks is a members only forum. There's public acknowledgements in my videos, in my video descriptions. There's a personalized thank you message, priority reply to YouTube comments, and so much more. Um, it really means a lot whenever anyone supports the channel, it makes a huge difference. I'm doing everything on my own, but with the support of all the people who are watching, even just watching my channel, liking, subscribing, sharing, makes an enormous difference. So thank you so much for that. But with all your support, I can do so much more with my channel and really make it really big and help as many people as possible because that's my ultimate goal. And if you want to see more fun math content, I've got two fun videos for you. Here's another video you're going to love, which is another fun proof. It's a proof that an increasing function from R to R has to be continuous almost everywhere. It can't have that many discontinuities. How cool is that? because there are examples of functions discontinuous everywhere. So check that out, it's a fun proof, super popular on my channel. I hope you love the video and I hope you're having an amazing day. I'd love to hear from you, so please drop a comment down below and share your thoughts and I wish you all the best and see you in either of those videos. Thank you so much.